time to go over the best gear that I've used in 2023. I have over 100 days in the backcountry this year in all kinds of climates, testing the big three like packs, pads, and tents, but also little things like headlamps and stoves. Here are my top picks for each category. Let's start by giving out the best backpack award, but just note that I will have a separate ultralight awards list for those of you who wanna cut a little bit of weight. I have two backpacks here that I think are worthy of the best backpack of 2023 award. For most categories, I do have two because I was pretty indecisive and wasn't able to pick just one. Starting with the pack on my right, we have the REI Flash 55. This is a great all around pack. It carries a ton of weight. It's relatively lightweight at just over a kilogram. Ton of great features like an adjustable torso, a little bit of a trampoline back. Not as crazy as the Gregory Focal here. The Gregory Focal has a really nice trampoline back there, but I think the claim to fame with the REI Flash 55 are the water bottle pockets. These water bottle pockets are phenomenal. You don't need really long arms or insane shoulder flexibility in order to take water bottles out and then put them back. The Gregory Focal is another great all around pack. It has a couple of different features that the Flash 55 doesn't have, like that trampoline back that I mentioned, as well as side entry water bottle pockets. I find that this is the best system other than what REI has because you can easily slide water bottles in and out and they're gonna stay really secure. The trampoline back, like I said, is really nice. It's one of the best that I've had for keeping your back ventilated and not having it get too sweaty. For the best sleeping pad award, if you want the most comfortable sleeping pad out there, then you have to check out the REI Helix. This pad relieves pressure points like no other. I sleep through the night on this pad consistently and feel great in the morning. It's also very warm, which just adds to that comfort. If you want something a little bit more lightweight, but that's still pretty comfortable and also very warm, then check out the Xped Ultra 5R. It uses vertical baffles, which isn't quite as comfortable as the dimpled baffling system that's on the REI Helix here but those vertical baffles are still pretty comfortable and this pad is very, very warm. This pad has an R value of 4.8, whereas the Helix has an R value of 4.9. For the best quilt award, I have two options for you. One option if you wanna go more ultralight and then one option if you want something a little bit more budget friendly. The ultralight version is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma quilt. You can get this made with 950 power fill down and seven denier shell fabric, which makes it one of the lightest weight quilts that you can get. With most quilts out there being very similar. It just comes down to what sort of specs you want and what sort of features you might want on the quilt. The Hammock Gear Econo Burrow gets the quilt award for budget option. This thing is one of the least expensive quilts out there while still being high quality. You get 800 power fill down, 10 denier, 10 denier, maybe 20 denier shell fabric. I'll, I'll let you know up in the corner there, but overall solid construction at a good price. This is not only a good budget option, but it's it's such a quality quilt that I find myself taking this on most backpacking trips. There's just a couple things that are just really nice about it, including the pad strap system. And then the next cinch has some bungee to it, which I find just makes tossing and turning within it a lot better. So if you're just getting into quilts and you want an option that's not gonna break the bank, then check out the Hammock Gear Econo Burrow. The best sleeping bag award goes to the Decathlon Trek 900. This is the zero degree version and this is the bag that I've given to my mom and Steffi Poo in order to keep them warm out on backpacking trips. It's one of the best bang for your buck sleeping bags out there. It's made with great materials and it's also very affordable, costing under $200 for this version, which is kind of crazy. A lot of quilts that are this weight and this quality are costing maybe double or more than that. And the comfort rating of zero degrees is accurate. Like I said, Steffi Poo and my mom have both used this sleeping bag down to those freezing or slightly below freezing temperatures and been toasty warm. For the best pillow award, we have the Xped Mega Pillow and then the Trekology 2.0. The Trekology 2.0 is gonna be for those of you who want a little bit less weight in your pack because the, the Xped Mega Pillow, it's a heavy pillow, but with that, you get an insane amount of comfort. You get a little bit of foam on top for insulation and warmth as well as comfort. It has a nice pillowcase on it for that nice face feel. And then it also has a pad strap attachment system so you can lock it onto your sleeping pad. It's a very tall pillow at four inches tall. So if you're a side sleeper, you're not gonna get a kink in your neck. And then it's very wide as well. It's almost as wide as my pillow at home, which is something that I never thought was gonna be a big deal until I tried it. With the Trekology 2.0, you also get a pad strap on there, which is great. It's not as tall as the Xped, but tall enough in order to keep you comfortable. And then it has a nice soft top to it. There's no pillowcase on the Trekology, but the top 
is pretty soft and has a little bit of give to it, which increases its comfort. For the best 10 award, I have two options for you, an ultralight version and then a more roomy version. The ultralight version is the Nemo Dragonfly two-person tent. You can fit two 25-inch wide taper pads in here. It weighs 1.2 kilograms trail weight, so it's the lightest fully freestanding tent you can get, and it's just an all-around good tent. The roomy option is the REI Half Dome SL3+. Plus. This thing is very lightweight, weighing just over two kilograms for the three plus version that I have here, but is 90 inches by 70 inches in size and floor space. There's pretty much no tent out there that's comparable for weight and size. So if you're looking for a roomy tent, maybe you're a couple with a dog or a couple kids, then this is a good tent to look at for those backpacking trips. For best stove, I've been really liking the MSR wind burner in 2023. It's similar to a jet boil in that it's an all-in-one system, but it has a few different technologies like a radiative burner that make it more effective based on my testing. An all-in-one system like this is gonna be your best bet if you want something simple that's just gonna work in any conditions that you're out in. It's very resistant to wind and because it has a solid MSR regulator, it also performs well as the temperature starts to drop. If you want something a little bit more lightweight, but still very effective in variable conditions, then the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe is a great option. It has a little lip on the top here in order to prevent the flame from getting affected too much by wind. And it also has an MSR regulator in there, which is great. Something I wish the wind burner has that the Pocket Rocket Deluxe has is a Pezo igniter. So there's this little button here that you press it and it lights the flame, gets it going, which is amazing. You don't need to be using a lighter. And I've been testing this a lot. I've probably pressed this button three, 400 times and it has caught about 99.9% .9 of the time. It very rarely fails and hasn't failed yet even though I've pressed it a lot. The best filter award goes to the Platypus Quick Draw. This has been my go-to filter for many years now because it filters water super quickly, which is something that I really value in the backcountry. And it also has these two caps, one on either end here, which is great if temperatures are getting below freezing, you really don't want your filter to freeze. And with those two caps, which are watertight, I can just throw this into the bottom of my quilt or sleeping bag and not have to worry about it freezing or leaking all over my insulation. I also really like the bag that Platypus provides. The first one I had, it leaked, but this one, which is one liter, is has been going very strong and it has a nice wide opening, which scoops water quickly and nice and compact and pretty light. The best headlamp award goes to a new headlamp on the market for 2023 that hasn't been getting a ton of attention, and it's the Black Diamond Deploy. This thing is one of the lightest headlamps on the market and it has a full stretchy headband. It's super comfortable to wear, but what's awesome about this is not only is it bright at 325 lumens, but it recharges with USB-C. Up until now, Nightcore was one of the only manufacturers releasing headlamps with USB-C, and none of them have been as lightweight and comfortable as this one. I wish the Black Diamond Deploy had a red light. That's one feature that it's missing, but otherwise it's kind of the perfect headlamp for me. I was really torn about which device to give the best SOS satellite communicator award to, but ended up going with the Garmin InReach Messenger. The InReach Mini 2 was a close contender, but the extra battery life that you get with the Messenger just kind of put it over the top compared to the InReach Mini 2. I've been going on a lot more longer trips into that kind of four, five, six day range. And the messenger gives me peace of mind that I'm not gonna run out of battery while I'm out on that trip. The InReach Mini 2 is a little bit lighter, but I find myself not using the navigation capabilities and features that the Mini 2 has. So the messenger is the way to go for me. For the best smartwatch award, I've tested pretty much every smartwatch brand out there. And Garmin is really the best based on my experience. And there's two watches that I think are the best that Garmin puts out there for hiking and backpacking. If you want the most feature rich, does it all watch, then the Garmin Enduro 2 is amazing. It has on-device mapping, insane battery life. I charge this once a month with tons of GPS-based activities, running, going to the gym, hiking, backpacking trips. This thing is amazing. It also has a flashlight, which is a great feature that I never thought I needed, but now can't really live without. If you want something that's a little bit less expensive, but still has almost all the features as the Enduro 2, then check out the Instinct 2 or 2X, which is the one that I have here. It also has insane battery life. The features that you're gonna be missing are on-device mapping with contour lines and things like that. You, you can get breadcrumb mapping with this, but I find that's not nearly as good as the full trail maps and contours that you get on the Enduro 2. You also don't have music, on-device music with the Instinct, which is something that I really like. 
with the Enduro 2 when I'm at the gym or going for a run, I don't need to bring my phone. But understand that not everyone needs all the features that the Enduro 2 has, and I'm glad that Garmin has the more affordable and, and more rugged Instinct, which is still a very solid watch in its own right. The Best Battery Bank Award goes to the Nightcore Carbo 10,000. Very lightweight battery bank, a lot of features to it, has great capacity, great charging input and output. But if you need something more affordable, then check out this Victomix from Amazon. This thing's, I got it for under $20 and I tested it. Really good capacity, really good discharge and recharge. Pretty lightweight as well. So if you need something on more of a budget, then definitely check out this. But the Nightcore is kind of the, the cream of the crop and the premium battery bank out there. Now time for the best Diddy Award. For those of you who don't know what a Diddy is, it's kind of just a miscellaneous item that you bring on a trip that you can't really categorize anywhere else. And, and, and maybe, maybe this isn't quite a Diddy, maybe you could categorize it under electronics, but the Flextail Tiny Pump 2X is amazing, especially in this day and age where our sleeping pads are getting bigger, thicker, wider, and it takes a lot of air to inflate them. And when you're doing that with your breath or even with an inflation sack, it can take a really long time. So I really like the Flextail Tiny Pump in order to save my lungs. And it also has a little, little flashlight slash lantern on the top there, which is nice just to kind of add some ambiance to your tent. The other item is probably more of a ditty and that's my Rusby bag. I use this to keep my oatmeal, bigger ones for homemade dehydrated meals. You can put snacks in them. They're basically like beefed up Ziploc bags. They don't weigh a ton, but they're also dishwasher safe and you can put boiling water in them. Steffi Poo and I probably have about a dozen of these little ones, a couple dozen of the medium sized ones, and then a handful of the very large ones back at home. We use the medium sized ones all the time for storing meat and stuff that we buy at Costco. Best trowel award goes to the Vargo Dig Dig. It may not be the lightest trowel out there, but these serrated edges cut through roots and ground like a saw. And it's one of the most ergonomic trowels out there. While there are some lighter trowels I might take on most of the trips, the Vargo Dig Dig is my non-ultralight backpacking trowel award. The best chair award goes to the REI Flex Light Air. The Helinox Chair Zero is slightly more comfortable than the Flex Light Air, but the Flex Light Air weighs a little bit less and is much more affordable, especially because it goes on sale quite often at REI. And honestly, I think affordability is a big thing. So Helinox, bring down your prices and then maybe next year you'll get the best chair award. The best shoe award almost didn't make it into these award ceremonies because I, I think footwear is a very individual thing. Everybody's foot is shaped differently. Everyone's footwear needs are different, but I thought I'd give this award more based on my experience. And, and for me, the best footwear award goes to the Hoka Speed Goat 5s. Has a ton of cushion, fits my foot very well, very comfortable. Vibra Mega Grip on the bottom here, so it sticks to rocks and slippery surfaces very well. All around great shoe that I, th I think is actually a shoe that is probably a good option for a lot of people out there. Just make sure that you're trying your footwear on before buying it. The best puffy jacket award goes to the Trekology MT100 down jacket. They just raised the prices to $100 in the US, but it's still very affordable everywhere else in the world. And even at $100, I think it's still one of the best buys out there for down jackets, still costing half as much as a lot of other options out there. Even though it's very affordable, its specs are still very high. It's lightweight, it's warm. It's just an all around great down jacket. If anyone ever asked me for a recommendation for a down jacket, this is the one I give them. That being said, I don't wanna sit on my laurels when it comes to down jackets, so I will be testing a whole bunch of different budget options. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that video where I look at Uniqlo, AliExpress options, Amazon options, a whole bunch of different $100 or less down jackets out there. I've always got questions about what trekking poles I like, but I think in 2023, when I switched to this new trekking pole from Comperdell, those questions went way, way up. So I'm gonna give the best trekking pole award to what I use on pretty much all of my trips. It's the Comperdell camera staff Vario. It uses an aluminum shaft here. It's not the most lightweight trekking pole out there, but it has a couple of features that I really like. First of all, the flick locks work really well. You have this giant, it's not cork, it's EVA, I'm pretty sure, but it has a really big handle that you can choke down on if you're going uphill or really kind of hold near the top if you're trying to go downhill and, and brace yourself. But what I really like about it, as someone who makes YouTube videos, is that it has an eighth inch screw on the top that I can attach quick, quick releases onto in order to attach my GoPro, my phone, or other things. It's just 
great trekking pole. I can still take this off and then use the trekking pole in order to set up trekking pole tents. Check out this video if you want to see my gear list for when I'm on trips where I want to balance weight and comfort. I think it's a gear list that will work for the majority of people out there. It's very comfortable while also still being very lightweight at just around 10 pounds.